Hey, what's going on everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics, and bringing you another series of videos where I do some basic digital painting techniques. Uh, as you can see here, I've already started and done a couple little warm-ups, and I'm just going to go ahead and show you um, how I do something like that really quick and easy, and uh, so it can allow you to get started with your own digital painting. And uh, keep in mind, this isn't a, an advanced course at all. I'm, uh, I'm still a somewhat novice in the digital paint field, but I feel I can offer uh, a few things that might help some of the beginners get across their struggles. So I'll show you real quick how I did the, uh, the armor to the leg. I just first sketched this out. Now I've got a standard brush. Uh, it's not on shape dynamics. Uh, it's only on transfer and I cover that in some of my other videos so if you got any questions there just you know watch some of the videos and you'll see I just go over here under brush and just go to transfer pen pressure pen pressure that's about it other than that I just use a few basic brushes that come with Photoshop so I am using CS6 here uh, I use whatever you like or whatever you got a lot of the softwares will do a lot of the same things so okay so at any rate uh, just to show you what I'm doing here, if I'm going to do some type of armor, I first designate my shape. Okay, so there's a basic shape. Uh, I'll even change this one up a bit. I'll do like a, maybe this is a, a knee plate or something, right? So I'll do like this pointed diamond shape right here. Maybe this protects the uh, the knee of the the knee of the knight or something. So there's our there's our decorative kind of knee plate or something whatever okay so yeah at first I designate my light source uh, one of the things I like about using a brush like this it allows you to shadow and texture at the same time uh, which for painting that uh, that works out really well so you want to get in the habit of doing that and yeah I'm just keep shadowing that away now the other thing I would do is since each one of these are you know a segmented kind of overlap to the next piece uh, they're gonna cast a little bit of a natural shadow like that so I'll just kinda draw that in below each segment and then since there's a point here we're gonna get a transition of the dark and then slowly fades off so I'll draw that as I keep uh, or kind of paint that in as I go. Alright, now the other thing that's real important is to select everything. Uh, I always use leave my magic, uh, no, I'm sorry, my lasso to additive, which you can do right up here. See that? It makes sure that each time you grab something, it adds it to the previous selection so you don't have to hold shift. Uh, so that's another little quick uh, tidbit for you. And see how I can just keep drawing that in. And if I mess up and there's something I don't like, I can just hit the Alt key. I'm usually pretty good at drawing my selections, and I'm only trying to stay relatively within that my outlined uh, shape, just like that. Now, another good thing, uh, if you're trying to get your selection just right, you can hit Q on your keyboard, it turns it into a quick mask, and you can use black and white to paint or erase your uh, your mask see that so I'm looking at it right there that mask is overall pretty decent so I'll hit Q again I'm back on my mask and now I'm back on brush I'm black I've got my opacity down a little bit and now I'll paint in the entire thing um, it's always good to kind of paint down uh, to a deeper value to start getting uh, your your paintings to look more realistic um, you want to be very sparingly with your white. You know, white should only be your extreme highlights. Uh, and maybe if the character's wearing like, you know, white in their suit or something. But you're you're never, you're generally hardly ever going to have a lot of white. If there's if there's a lot of white in your designs, and I'm guilty of this, uh, you're probably not seeing, you know, lighting properly. And you need to keep studying that and adjusting that in your mind's eye because. Uh, if you look around you, uh, even in the room you're sitting in right now, it's very rare that you see white. Um, it's it's used, uh, you know, very sparingly in, in items and things, so in reality or whatever. So, okay, so I got a little bit of shadowing there. Now I want to define some kind of sh shape, even on this side. Even though the highlight's going to be over here, there still has to be some form 
of definition and shape so even if I do that real light you know I'm starting to round that out a little bit more if you can see what I'm doing there okay and then now I'll come back uh, you see I haven't smudged anything yet uh, I think I'll add a little bit more shadow to the base of each one of these shapes I say segments a lot because anything that's separated or divided to me like this is a segment and that's the way I look at it when I'm painting it or drawing it uh, because you almost have to treat them individually as far as shadowing and, and highlights go uh, and also the fact that we got to remember that this is going to be a specular object so you see how over here I grabbed the highlight from the what I would consider the the furthest point forward and then a highlight to the side showing the bend there so I'll do the same thing here I'll start off and I'll start painting in the highlight here quickly brighten it uh, just because this is a, a specular object so it's gonna the highlight is gonna transition really quick it's not gonna you know fade off uh, smoothly around the entire object if it did it would signify more of a um, flesh tone or something with a, a skin to it um, you know or, or maybe even a cloth something softer but when it's it's harder and more coarse or more specular in nature it's going to be a very tight uh, transition from light to dark so you'll notice that when you look at like cars or metals or you know weapons armor whatever so there's our quick highlight I'm going to get that really bright at the highest point you know so that, there's my white I don't want to overdo it and then on the very edge of this I'll also do another highlight like so because um, mainly you know these uh, these types of objects uh, for one they, they show highlights really really uh, defined but then also uh, they show a lot of bounced light so you want to keep that in mind when doing your your armor and your your metals that they're gonna you know catch a lot of bounced light you know refracted light or whatever you want to call it okay so there's that now I'll take control D uh, which will deselect for me um, I don't like that the line on the other side so I'm gonna go select inverse and I'm going to just go ahead and erase that see if this looks any better it's another reason why I like having the uh, selection on yeah I think I like that better it had kind of a funky edge around the perimeter of it so now I can even have the erase tool still in hand uh, I don't know if I have a hard brush but it works better with the hard brush and I can go back and clean up my uh, my very edge to this You know, but some of those bumps might come in handy you could you know sit there and now oh and this is the other thing now that there's enough uh, painted surface down I can hit lock transparency over here and this is a really cool effect because now I can paint freely like it's selected even though it's not and say I want to add a little bit of you know roughness or texture to the the edge of this uh, see how I'm not painting on the white surface I'm just painting on the um, uh, what do you call it? The sorry, I'm drawing a blank here. The armor, I guess. But uh, I was trying to say the artwork. But I'm sitting there looking at it and realizing it's only painting uh, on a portion of it. Now the reason being is because it hasn't. Um, I didn't put down enough uh, opacity, even though it looks opaque. It's because there's a tr there's white behind it. I didn't put out enough opacity where the transparency layer is working properly. So keep in mind if you paint enough opacity down, which I should have before I started that, uh, that would have worked just fine. Now if I grab it with the selection tool, uh, select inverse, uh, quick mask to make sure I got it uh, selected properly. Q for quick mask by the way. And quick mask allows you to see a little bit more in depth with this and paint in my opacity back up paint in your your mask so what I'm doing is I'm 
getting rid of that little funky white edge or whatever real quick by painting around it and you can select it too I just like drawing in my mask uh, sometimes so I'm gonna fix that issue we had because I really want to show you the importance of using your transparency uh, pixels effect da -da 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 -da. sorry this is taking so long just give me a sec Maybe go grab yourself some Kool-Aid while I get this all fixed up. Just kidding, I'm almost done. And who drinks Kool-Aid anymore anyways? Okay, so quick mask, back to Q. Uh, I guess I should get rid of that other funky stuff off to the side. Oh, uh, Alt to deselect certain objects like that. Okay, so now I have just my armor selected. Um, that should be about right. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually add a layer. Boom. Boom. Drop that behind there. Control E merges down. Okay, so now, yeah, now I have a solid object. So now if I even deselect this, I hit transparent, pixel locked, pixels, whatever. Now I can do what I was talking about where I paint inside of it. I don't go outside of it. Um, it's got enough pixel information uh, to do that so sorry so at any rate now I can go through and add some some grit and some texture to the edges of this armor because you know even though I have a little bit on the inside there's no way that the the edges of this armor would be you know as clean and crisp as, as I have it so what I do is just kind of dirty it up a little bit muddy it up whatever And then what you do is after you get a little bit of that texture and that grit in there, you just kind of come back and pinpoint areas of it that you like and that you, you think would look cooler if you added some, took some away, whatever. It's just kind of a process in which you feel things out. Um, really, if you're trying to get better at art, you just need to, to delve into it and do as much as possible. Um, it sounds cliche you know like anything if you just do a lot of it you're gonna get better obviously but art is very much in that regard where what you're doing is looking for things that that stick that resonate with you that uh, influence you you know that you look at and go man I really like the way that came out make a note of it you know write that down like you need to you know log that information and and make it accessible so that when you come back you know, you go like, hey man, I, I drew the perfect, uh, you know, knee plate to that armor. Uh, I got that stuff down. Like, so, you know, next time you go to do it, you know, you're, that comes to mind the way that you did it. And you just knock it right out and do it better and better every time that you revisit that. So, um, that's all you're really trying to do. And then sometimes you'll, like, I might figure out a cool texture for this. And then it might apply to... 10 other things that I draw randomly so um, that's really in my opinion that's what you're doing that's what you're getting better at you know it's not unattainable by people you know you know when people go oh I, I feel like I can't draw that good it's just a practice so just get in there do it knock it out have fun with it and you'll you'll get better so no worries so yeah, so I'm gritting it up, adding some texture. I probably should have made a copy off to the side just to show you, you know, it, you know, and to show myself maybe things I'm adding right now are making it look better. Maybe they're not. Um, I just know it looked too smooth and too clean. You know, I guess we got the one off to the right for a, you know, a comparison. So there I've added some texture, some grit. I'm going to even add it into the highlights a bit. So let me do that. And also, just so you know, because uh, it always bothers me when artists are doing something, they don't explain, you know, kind of what they're doing. Uh, you know, for all you know, I'm just, you know, I'm scribbling across this with extreme pressure and, you know, white knuckling it. I'm not. I'm just very lightly dabbing this brush. And, well, it's at 100% right now. Just dabbing it, and, and I'm actually going in one direction. Boom, boom, boom. Feel it. Encouragement. No, but I'm just trying to say that, you know, I'm not, you know, 
this is full pressure right there. I'm not doing that. I'm very lightly just kind of throwing some dabs in there. Like I, I tried a picture if I was using a paintbrush and you know I'm trying not to put down too much paint at once. So if that makes any sense to you. Okay, X flips my colors back and forth. I'm still just predominantly working, uh, you know, or I'm only working in black to uh, black and white right now. So just kind of bouncing back and forth, and and now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to build highlights in with this white that I'm using, but I'm also going to use just little dabs to build in some more texture uh, with the white. Let's see if I can further bring that that grittiness out. Uh, and also keep it in mind to hit some of the edges like so you know, so I don't have this perfect line uh, running around the the perimeter of this uh, this piece of armor or whatever so I'm just kind of breaking that up a bit Keep in mind, people, like I said uh, in this video and other videos, I'm not like some big high end professional. I'm just a guy with a dream. I'm just a guy doing it. And, you know, I make I make a little bit of money with my art. Don't get me wrong. I don't um, I don't make a killing off it, but I'm I'm getting better all the time and I'm making a little more as I go. So I just don't want to give people some false impression of what I am and what I do. Uh, I'm some uh, high and mighty artist. I'm just somebody trying to figure it out just like you are. So um, take that in respect with the, the videos, you know, that I don't want people to think that I, I think I'm some amazing artist, you know, because I, I get that a little bit in some of the comments, you know, like they'll act like, I don't know, some people are rude and they'll say like, you know, oh man, you talked about yada yada and you went off on some tangent and it's like, well, sorry, dude. I'm just sitting here trying to show you my techniques. I don't, I'm, it's not like I'm getting rich on this, you know. So, I don't know. I, I guess I shouldn't feel the need to explain myself like that. But to the people that are cool and and coming back and checking out my stuff, you know, I just want to make that known that I, you know, I try to be humble and and uh, you know, not think that I'm all that and a bag of chips. I'm pretty cool though. On a scale of one to ten, I'd be like a, I'd be a pretty good, like a seven point four, something, somewhere in there. But yeah, so as you can see, that's me trying to add a little bit more grit to the one on the left versus the one on the right. I don't know if I possibly overdid it. I, a lot of times I'll go back. Uh, this is a smudge brush here. I'll just kind of dabble that in there and tone it back a little bit more and you know just keep going with it and you know sometimes I'll I'll, I'll hit uh, pay dirt you know right away and say oh I, I love where that one went you know and other times I gotta kinda finagle it but it's just kind of a process of going back and forth and you know again seeing what sticks seeing what resonates and, and what you know jumps out in your mind's eye and goes yeah that's what I was looking for um, now the other thing that you would do at this you know juncture if you get to this point and you're say you know content with where you're at in the artwork um, I would just add another layer I typically use color mode and or overlay I, I mix them up I use a, a bunch of them I'll even use some uh, straight opacity by the time I'm done uh, let's say that this armor is somewhat golden but you want kind of this I can't remember what I use for gold it's just like a orangish brown Let's try. God, I know it when I see it, but I'm not seeing it. Let's try something in here. All right, so I got it on color mode. Uh, I've got the transparency pixels locked, I believe. No, I don't. Oh, duh. I would have to be on the artwork for that to work, anyways. Okay, so there's that. So let me change the brush to color mode. Either one should work for you. Okay, so there's you know there's that with color mode. And then, um, you know, you just keep playing with it. Like, uh, let me try to take the dodge tool and see if I can brighten some of the highlights over here. 
Yeah, see that looks a little better to me. And then I'd probably take another layer. Uh, let me duplicate this actually. Duplicate and take a, more of a brown now. Let me sample this. Go into more of the deeper brown, brownish red. And still in color mode. <clears throat> I'm not digging that. Let me try. What do I want to do here? Let me jump back over to this color mode. Normal here. No. Let's try overlay. Nope. No cigar. Let's try normal. Okay, what am I doing wrong here? Is it because it's locked? Yeah, that was it. Okay, so now I'm painting with normal mode. Uh, I'm just trying to add some darker contrasting brown here to this. And actually, probably better if I was blotching this in, to tell you the truth. And I think it needs to even be darker. Brown almost black. I want it to have a little bit of brown in there. Yeah, I'm kind of dabbing it in there again because I don't want to wipe away all the texture that I painstakingly dropped in there. But by, by adding this brown and potentially even some red, um, it's gonna it's gonna give it a little bit more life. So let me let me try some like burgundy rust rust red, something like that. And bear with me because I am not a color guy like um, Something about color kind of escapes me. I, I see things more in black and white when it comes to drawing and all that. I, I love when I see great uh, color work, but it's just not my not my cup of tea for some reason. So forgive me if this isn't coming out excellent. Day. Maybe a little bit over here on this side, and that's really all I do for digital paint. I mean, this is just one little thing that you could do, you know, but you should, in my, uh, you know, opinion, uh, you should practice uh, various textures and segments and, and portions of your art and then group it all together and then make something massive like your, you know, full character and your um, dimensional blase, splee, whatever. But you, you first want to, like, capture portions of it. Do a cloud do a hand, do do some hair, you know, flowing in the wind and all these things and then collectively put it all together and create your masterpiece. You know, um, it's almost like if you jump in and do all of it at once, something's going to get lost. You're, you're going to flake out before you can, you know, accomplish it. So, so at any rate, this is a good way to practice. Hopefully that helps you. Be sure to comment, be sure to like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Uh, also, tell me what you'd like to see in the future so I can address that for you because I definitely will. And I thank you very much for uh, participating and for watching the videos today, uh, our video. And uh, be sure to check out more on the way. And you can also visit robertmarzullo.com for some of my artwork. And, and I appreciate the visits to my site. And uh, also ramstudios1.dvnart. So thanks very much. Uh, have a good day. Keep drawing. Keep having fun. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.